Hey guys, this is Jared with Hunt Nashville. I'm going to keep this intro short, sweet, and to the point. No rambling this week, I promise. This week we sat down with Michael Ernst. Um, he's a outdoor photographer that we got hooked up with online just by simply finding some of the stuff that he was posting on Facebook and Instagram. His stuff is really, really good. I highly recommend you check it out. Some of his pictures are just insane and really make you wonder how in the world he actually got those in the first place. So we hook up with him online, come to find out he does a lot of kayak fishing, uh, fishes some like kayak, uh, kayak fishing tournaments, also big time deer and turkey hunter, and so we got along really, really well, talked a lot about his background, um, his kind of upbringing, how he got into hunting, how he got into outdoor photography, how he got into kayak fishing, and a little bit of everything in between. So appreciate you guys listening, thanks for checking us out, uh, without further ado, here we go. I saw one Jake walking out. He was in a field, and I couldn't. I would have shot him in a heartbeat. I was so desperate. <laughs> yeah, I'm at that point too. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, I'm not picky. I shoot small deer and I shoot Jakes. So I'm like a I'm like a deer manager's worst nightmare, just because I I always ask if I'm hunting on a property. I'm like, right. you know, eight or eight or larger or whatever your thing is, but like. If there's no rules, and I'll shoot a spike. I don't care. I'm just like a meat hunter, and I hunt turkeys just because I love hunting turkeys. But the um, yeah, no gobbles. So well, I guess that's a good place as any uh, to start. Hey guys, this is Jared with Hunt Nashville. I'm here with my new friend Michael. Is it Ernst? Ernst. Okay, yep. that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. I'm here with Michael Ernst. We got hooked up. I guess on Instagram. Yeah, I believe so. Started, I think so. How I started following your stuff. Yeah. I think I saw some of your outdoor photography, which we'll talk about in a minute, and I was thoroughly blown away with. Well, thank you. Somehow, how you got those shots that I've never been able to get, and um, <laughs> and so yeah, I think that's kind of how we hooked up, and that's been maybe like a year or two ago. We have just been kind of conversing yeah. online, and mm -hmm. and, I, and then we started this about three months ago, and. I was talking to Kevin about like we had you know we have a ton of musicians and songwriters and, and artists and that kind of thing. I was like I'd really like to just talk to some people like just about hunting every once in a while. And I was like I have the guy. I was like we got to sit down with him at some point in time. So that's kind of the rest is history. So thanks for coming on to this, man. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. What um, we talked about it a little bit earlier once uh, we got acquainted here. But what's uh, give me a little bit of your background about where you're from. Um, what you've done for a living and what, um, how you got into hunting originally? Um, originally from, originally from Waconia, Minnesota, uh, just west of Minneapolis, about 30 miles. Uh, I lived out there for about, well, 30, I moved here when I was 29. So I lived there for 29 years. Okay. Um, fishing and hunting have been in my family, I mean, my whole life. My dad's a big hunter, fisherman, still is. Um, so it's just always been part of our life. Um, we lived just in a one acre property, but our neighbor had 60 acres and we had okay. full access to it. So I grew up being able to come home from school and put on blaze of orange and walk across the cornfield in the woods to deer hunt. That's so, awesome. Um, it's kind of how that started. I, I, I grew up working on the lake. We had a, a lake right in our hometown and I worked at the marina. Okay. And so I actually had these dreams of becoming a guide when I was young. Right. So I went and talked to the local guide. You know, I said, what can I do? And he said, well, the first thing, he's like, go get a job on the lake. And I said, okay. So that's, I took that first step and went and worked at uh, the place called Intel Marina. And uh, I worked there for seven years. And we, we did everything from sell tackle and bait to build docks, take down docks, okay. um, rent boats, clean them. Right. And, you know, and then we always, I mean, every guy there fished all the time. So I'm, I mean, if, if it was our summer job, so if we got, if we opened the shop at six, we were done at two, we would just hop in a rental boat or hop in our own boat and go fish the rest of the day. Right. So, um, we learned the lake a lot and then we started fishing. We had Wednesday night tournaments out there. I started fishing those and I eventually did get into uh, muskie fishing a lot. It was a great muskie lake and I did end up guiding for three years for muskie okay. before I moved here. Oh, wow. And then I... I probably still, it wasn't full time, but I just did it in nights and weekends yeah. and, um, it, it paid for my boat. I had a, <laughs> I had, I had a 20 foot Ranger with a 225 is, on it. So that's a it, uh, expensive hobby. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much I didn't make any money doing it, but right. it paid for my boat. And, um, and then, but then I met the woman of my dreams and she's a musician and she right. lived down here. So I, I moved down here and had to sell the boat. And How so did you guys meet originally? So she's actually from my hometown. Okay. Um, 
She's five years younger than me. She, uh, me and her brother were good friends. Her brother's just a year older than me. Okay. And we went to two different high schools. I went to a private Christian school. She went to the public school. And then um, when she graduated from high school, she went out to Berkeley College of Music in Boston and to chase this music dream. And so I come from a small town. Like everyone knew her as the girl that right. went off to go be famous. <laughs> you know? And um, so fast forward like 10 years, I was graduated from college at home and uh, all of a sudden all these flyers started popping up and it was on the front page of a local paper, you know, like Jen Bostick's coming back to do a CD release show. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I remember her, you know, uh-huh. I'll go to the show. So it turned out that I invited a couple of friends. They all had to cancel. So I went there alone. <laughs> her brother was playing bass right. for her and uh, her brother recognized me. And I went up and talked to Jeff and he's like, hey, he's like, you know, he's like, we still have a house down in the lake. We're having a party tonight. Why don't you come on over? I said, okay. So I went over there, ended up starting talking to Jen and we talked for several hours and 11 months later we were engaged. <laughs> <laughs> so... So I, I always tell people that Jen Bostick's shows are truly life changing because <laughs> you yeah, better watch out. <laughs> yeah, you better watch out. I went to her show and ended up moving to Tennessee. It's <laughs> dangerous. So you came here. Did you? Um, how is the hunting and fishing deer uh, hunting and fishing different here than it is where you're from? Um, well, the one thing that I do miss a lot is ice fishing. I know okay. people from the South don't quite You're understand not it. not going to get that here. But <laughs> you might be able to crack through an eighth into of, right. of ice once a year, maybe. Um, but besides that, uh, the fact that you can fish open water year-round down here is awesome. And then you have, like, blue catfish and striper and hybrid. Like, those species aren't up there. Right. So it's, like... I really got turned on the striper down here because they're big, they're mean, oh, yeah. they're aggressive, and that's something that we didn't have up there. And so I love that aspect of it. Um, there is great musky fishing down here, but up there every lake had them. And you could, like, I still have to drive an hour and a half from here to go chase musky. Right. Um, walleye is obviously better up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some down here, but it's not like up there. Um, what about trout? Trout, they you got much colder weather up there. So. They have a lot of trout up there, but it's more like the unless you get up to like the Great Lakes and you can right. you know catch steelhead and all that stuff in the run. Um, but otherwise, besides that, they have like the northern streams and stuff that'll have brooks and rainbows and stuff in them. But like down here, I mean, like I fish the Katy Fork a lot for trout, mm-hmm. and that's that's a special place. I mean, there's Katie's some, beautiful. There's a really big fish in that river and i mean it's it's a beautiful river i love that place yeah no the caney's awesome when we first moved to tennessee we moved to um gordonsville and um oh, okay. and so i used to hunt off the caney all the time nice. and i'd fish it sometimes we had a friend that lived right on it and i'd go to his house and fish and i never hardly called anything because i'm not a good angler i wouldn't even call myself an angler i'm not a good fisherman but uh but we hunted right on the edge of it some and that's there's some beautiful country out there yeah, it's awesome. Some steep country. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, what about the hunting? How is it different here than, I guess, big game especially? Uh, it's, it's deer. Well, for one thing, the numbers down here are incredible. I mean, the the seasons are incredibly longer. Yeah. Uh, when I when I grew up hunting deer, uh, I didn't bow hunt for a long time. I started bow hunting after college, so I pretty much grew up hunting where you had to pick an A season or B season. Okay. And in a section of the state. So we, I always hunted bee season and my season was from Saturday to the following Sunday. So it was nine days long. And, and that's all you get. That's all you get. So you get nine days. Is it rifle or shotgun? Where I was shotgun only. Okay. So the upper half of the state's rifle. We live in the Southern half gotcha. of the state. So shotgun only. Wow. And, um, on top of that, you got one tag with it. And if you didn't apply for a doe tag, it had to be an antler deer. So it had to be a buck. Or you could apply for a tag, and if you applied for a doe tag, that wasn't an extra tag. That just meant you could shoot a doe. doe so if you shot a doe, right. that would take your original tag. And Did then, they have an antler restriction? No, no, an, no antler, antler restriction. Restriction. Well, actually, now they do. Oh, okay. They didn't wow. when I grew up. And now the zone I hunted now, it has to be, I think it's got to be four, four inside right. or more. That's how it was in Mississippi when I was a kid. Um, so, like, I grew up, you know, now I consider myself... Uh, a trophy hunter or whatever like i fill the freezer with does every year if i don't get a shot at a big buck i'm not going to take it but like i grew up i mean if it had horns you pulled the trigger because that was <laughs> otherwise you weren't going to get one you know and that sounds like me except we have super <laughs> liberal seasons here i would shoot anything but like i was talking to i was on turkey hunting yesterday morning and i ran into a guy and we ended up hunting for two hours together just like met in the woods and we hunted for a while and uh, he's a bow fisherman and he was here for a bow fishing tournament 
and so he was just hunting for a few days and and we were talking about it. He's from Arkansas, and, and he's like, yeah, our season ended last weekend. Started after yours. It ended three or four mm-hmm. weeks before yours does. And uh, and we were talking about, I was like, we were talking about deregulations, and he's like, are they pretty strict here? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, it's very liberal, at no. least in Unit L in the area we are. Yeah. I'm like, you can shoot three does a day three every day. A day. You like, can shoot I, like 200 like, deer if you can manage it's to like shoot. like 190-something yeah. deer you can shoot here if you want to. <laughs> I've never shot more than four. I think it's the most I've killed the season, but... He was like, you're kidding me. He's like, they're not worried about wiping them out. I was like, well, nobody's going to kill that many deer. No. And, like, some of the rural, all the rural areas have good populations of deer, at least around Middle Tennessee, obviously. Right. But you've got all these suburban areas that have these high concentrations of deer that nobody yeah. can hunt. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to take all of that into account. They're hoping people, some people can kill the fringe of those deer in the suburban areas. Because right. they're getting bad, real oh, yeah. bad in some of these. My parents live in South Nashville. Like, make two turns and you can see downtown and they have does run through their yard all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just that kind of stuff. So it's, um, but yeah, it always it's always crazy to me because I hear, like, everybody talking about the regulations in other states. I'm like, I'm not going to complain about ours anymore because, like, it's super liberal. No, every time I see on Facebook, whatever, all these arguments pop up about, like, you know, TWRA raising prices or $3 doing this. A yeah or, or and i'm just like i always respond i'm like look like i grew up you know spending 20 dollars on a license that i could hunt nine days if i wanted to shoot another deer which most of the time you couldn't but other times you could it was an extra 13 dollars per deer uh-huh. you know and then i had to buy a turkey tag i had to buy a bear tag i had to buy all you know it's, <laughs> yeah. i was like you guys have nothing to complain about <laughs> well and the cost and just like you know what that money goes towards i think general you know general public doesn't really understand where all that money comes from and where all that money goes. Like right. people don't really get like those hunting license sales or what are funding you loving that white tailed deer. Like right. that's where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's a, it's a contradiction because hunters are not doing it. Not all hunters are doing it because they love warm and warm and cuddly deer. They're doing it because they want the deer around so they can kill them. Right. So it's a contradiction. Is like a lot of times, like you want this deer to be around so you can take its life. <laughs> so you're giving this money to save its future life to give it to it. And but most people don't really understand that and all the Pittman Robertson money that comes into all that stuff. And they like they don't they don't think about those things. So like we're some we're these uh, ruthless killers, these bloodthirsty yeah. rednecks, where in reality we're the reason that that deer's around for, to say, for you to see to complain about us shooting it. Absolutely. <laughs> and so it's, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a big contradiction, but that's a whole other tirade. I don't know. That's one thing that always gets under my skin whenever I hear that stuff and people on, you know, anybody on Facebook. But then I hear hunters complaining about stuff and I'm like, I was like, you guys need to really think about this. Like, your permit going up $3 this year. Like, think about what that money's going towards. Well, and right. think about how yeah. much that... I mean, I spent another $9 on permits. No, I spent another $12 on permits this year than I did three years ago. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not a big deal. 12 bucks for a whole year. That's, that's... McDonald's twice. Right, exactly. <laughs> McDonald's <laughs> once if you don't eat cheap. Like, yeah. So, um, but anyways... So, did you do a lot of turkey hunting up from where you're from? It's yeah, like, I did. Way left turn. <laughs> I, I did, and turkey hunting was growing up. Turkey hunting was a uh, application only, so you had to apply. Okay. It was lottery system, so like a quota hunt, or um, well, it's just they had seasons, and okay. so so they divided it into seven different seasons. It was the last two seasons were seven days long, and the first five were five days long. Okay, you had to apply for a season, and then if you got drawn, you could hunt. If you didn't get drawn, you had to wait till next year, and. Um, now it's to the point where there's, I think, the last three or four seasons, you can buy them over the counter because okay. the turkey population has increased so much. But, but yeah, growing up, you had to apply, and sometimes, you know, you went, you'd get a license every three years or every yeah. other year, and then when you did get a license, you had those five days to hunt. So if you didn't get one of those five days, it was like, well, that's yeah, amazing. we'll try again in two years. You know, and, and that's just once you get one, you're done. You know, down here, the fact you can hunt for over a month, and yeah. shoot four. Yeah. It's, it's, I was like, whoa. And then go back in the fall you know? if you don't get enough. Yeah, you can go back and shoot. A couple years ago, you can shoot six in the fall. Uh-huh. Well, and shoot, what, it's still either sex. I think, too, you can go shoot hens if you want to. Oh, yeah, it is, yep. And Minnesota has a fall season as well. I never did it because it always coincides with deer hunting, and mm-hmm. I was just like, you know, whatever. Um, and, and bow hunting in Minnesota, if you do archery hunt for deer, the season does go from middle September until December 31st. So you okay. do have a long archery season. It's right. just the gun season's real tight. I gotcha. Um, 
What but, about the deer size up there? It's quite a bit different than it is here too, as well. Yeah, so a lot of corn fed bucks. <laughs> yeah, so so I've actually and and I've truly been blessed to hunt a great property down here. I had a uh, you know we'll talk about my photography and video a little bit more later, yeah. but I had a guy contact me and said, you know, hey, I've seen some of your videos. You know, if you'll come and video my kids and take pictures of them and stuff while we're hunting, in turn you can hunt my property. Oh wow. And, He's got over a thousand acres over by Bucksnort, and it's oh, wow. this land is just incredible. You know, I've it's killed a, a couple area. turkeys on it. There's I've over there a lot, yeah. deer everywhere. I mean, I've I probably sat in the last two years, I don't know, 50, 55 times, and I can maybe maybe one or two times I didn't see deer. I mean, you always see deer. Right. You know, it's just you just we have food plots out there, and the does come out every evening you right. know, just wait for them to come out and whether that buck comes out with them or not that's what you're waiting for right if you just want to put meat in the freezer you just go out and like i'm gonna shoot a doe <laughs> you're gonna go shoot and, a doe right like we have a shooting shack out there we have a real long field with um targets out there mm -hmm. and um it goes like 400 yards and there's a nice and shooting shack with a roof and everything and last year we had a real cold morning mm -hmm. and my dad was actually down here hunting and i already had tagged out. I had my two bucks for the year. Right. And so I said, I'm, I'm going to go shoot a doe. And it was so cold. I actually told him, I jokingly talked about it, but then I ended up doing it. I brought my sleeping bag down in the shooting shack. <laughs> I was all bundled up in my sleeping bag, uh -huh. you know, and then all of a sudden two does walked out and I just leaned <laughs> up and I already had the gun in the cradle for sighting your gun in. And I just moved the scope over and shot. And I was like, well, that was probably the easiest deer I've ever yeah, killed. Yeah, that's easier than going to the grocery <laughs> store, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so it's... Um, Everyone says Minnesota is bigger deer, and Minnesota, the body wise, absolutely. You right. know, like you sh your typical doe is 120 pounds. Wow. You know, and your your yearling bucks, six pointers and stuff, are 130, 140 mm -hmm. and, and stuff. And you know, down here, that's not the case. No. Um, but but antler wise, you know, I've three of the biggest bucks in my life have been down here in the really? last five years compared to Minnesota. And we did hunt a very highly pressured area. Right in minnesota that everyone killed everything so like the bucks really didn't have a chance to grow i mean there were big bucks around i've i've seen bigger bucks mm -hmm. in minnesota hunting that i just didn't get shots at right there's definitely some studs around there um but i've had better luck down here but then again that's because also the property you get, you get, to get a pretty good hook up yeah but i mean you know when, when my dad comes to hunt mm -hmm. when i'm working he always just goes down to the lake here and hunts yeah. the public land on priest and he didn't get a shot at it, but last year during the rut, he the biggest. He's been hunting for forty years. He's sixty three, mm -hmm. I believe, and the biggest buck he's ever seen in his life really? came chasing a doe right by him down by the lake, That's and he awesome. was like, he called me just shaking, you know. He it, it ran by him. He said it was like twenty feet from him, but it just came through the woods uh, full sprint chasing a no doe. Time. He never even tried to put his gun up, but right. he was. He, he called me almost just like he could hardly <laughs> the get the words out. He, it was. <laughs> I was like. Maybe I need to start hunting right behind my house a little bit more. Yeah, and that's how it goes. You know, like you drive, you get all your gear, you drive an hour to go somewhere, you, you hike three miles to get in, and like a half mile from your house, everybody's like, "Oh, I just saw the biggest deer of my life." I'm like, "Oh, awesome." Well, same thing he told me too. Like he's hunted down there four or five times now, and he's always like, "I see turkeys every time I hunt," you know. And I've never turkey hunted down there yet. And I, I, I've heard J, JP is a great place. Yeah, I've heard it's really good. So, I've heard you really, to turkey hunt it, you really need a boat the, to really get around. To get to the good areas. And to get to the good areas and to get around quickly. They're like, mm -hmm. you really need a boat because if not, you're going to do a lot of walking just to get from place to place. But you can't hunt from the boat, but you can use right. the boat to get from you, place to place. Because yep. I've got a buddy who's turkey hunted. He's a big duck hunter, so he's got the whole pop-up blind yeah. deal, all, all that. And um, and he, uh, he took his duck boat down there one morning. I think he killed a bird, but he was like, I don't know how people hunt this without a boat. He's like, because like you just like... Really, to get access and quickly, he's like, you could get there from there, but it'd be a haul. <laughs> yeah, it's if you want to take the time to do it, because I even I fished a tournament on Old Hickory mm -hmm. uh, last spring, and when I was putting in, a guy was putting in a John boat, two guys, and they had turkey decoys raw. You know, oh, that's what and, they were going out, and to they were going out hunting, and I heard them both shoot, and they come back about. Two hours later, and they both had it. They, they really? both held up the birds as they drove by me, and I was like, "Nice." That you would know? be a, that'd be a fun experience, turkey hunting. Would it would be. And, and I, took, and I, I duck hunt priest a lot as well. Okay. And um, you know, Bear Island, that huge island. You know, I'll hunt, I'll hunt it, and I mean, that thing's covered with deer sign. Really. I and mean, there's, I don't know how many deer are out there, but there's deer out there. You get there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> 
How well, how does the blind work? How blinds work out there? Because I know at like Cheatham W or Cheatham Lake, you've got to they've got to go draw. So priest is open hunting as long as okay. it's as long as it's WMA and you're not in a safe area. Okay. you can just hunt from the bank. Okay, that's awesome. Do they have blinds down there, like mm-hmm. permanent blinds? Or? No, you just, uh, just if, go if, set you, up, if you set up a blind, thing. yep, you got to take it down and stuff. So hmm. like drag brush from the shore or something. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I've never tried. I might try to do that this winter. It's not good hunting on priest, but it's. You know, if I, I go to and stuff or just not many. Yeah, it's, at all? it's mainly divers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you get your good days. Like if the weather's nasty, like two years ago when we got all that snow or yeah, two winters ago, we had some really good hunts out there in the middle of the snow and the cold mornings after. Um, but and like I'll go to the old hickory drawing every year. I just haven't had any luck getting a good blind. Right. Usually once the first 20 are gone, I go home because right. we made the mistake of drawing a crappy blind four years ago and had to rebuild it and uh, put all this money into it and never killed the duck out of oh it. So gosh, it was, that's the worst. Yeah. So yeah, now some of those guys get intense with those blinds. <laughs> yeah, I know. So now once the good ones are gone, I just go home. So maybe I'll be lucky enough to get one, but if I'm not going to go blind hop cause I only hunt weekends mm-hmm. and usually they're full and I, I'm not going to go drive around at sunrise looking for an empty blind right. to set up. So I just, I go out here and you know, I had some really good duck hunting in Minnesota and I, we went out to the Dakotas every year, which is phenomenal. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I actually lived in South Dakota for four years and went to college out there. Okay, so right. I, I got spoiled out there. The duck hunting out there was amazing. Right. Yeah, um, there's some stuff here that's just gangbuster and awesome in our part of the state, the center. But uh, there's some stuff like the duck hunting. You, you get mixed reviews. Generally, it's like, you know, it's okay, but if you catch them at the right time, it's great. And then right. every once in a while, you get a guy who's like, oh, man, it's awesome. And I'm like, well, is it awesome in just the one place you are, or is it really that awesome? Have you or have you, ever, have, yeah, have you ever, yeah, have you ever experienced awesome? <laughs> right. Have you ever gone to Louisiana and shot ducks? Because it, uh, you might, you might consider, <laughs> might consider not consider this awesome anymore. That's uh, that's why the turkey hunting. I consider the turkey hunting awesome because I have I've turkey hunted in Florida and Georgia and Alabama and Mississippi. And, oh wow! And uh, and uh, and the turkey hunting out there is great. Uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, growing up turkey hunting in Mississippi and then turkey hunting here. The turkey hunting here is awesome. <laughs> like I've hunted worse. I've hunted worse mm-hmm. areas. At least I had, some, I had some good areas in Minnesota. My my cousin has seventy five acres of land that we hunted on that had a lot of turkey on it. So I was I had some good action there too. But but it, it's definitely good down here. Yeah. No, it's phenomenal. What um, what got you into like doing outdoor photography originally? So I always had a passion for photography. Um, Going way back when, like, you remember when you're in middle school and you had to sell stuff and if you sold so much stuff, you could get rewards or whatever. <laughs> and I remember I always... taffy at our school. Yeah, you know, you'd, you'd sell Christmas cards or whatever. Uh, and then, and I remember one of, I, I accrued so many points and one of the things I wanted was a camera, you know, like, and, and, and it was this cheap crappy camera and I mm-hmm. went to take these awesome pictures and you get them developed and they look like crap, you know. <laughs> but anyways, um... So I've always had a passion for it, and then I always meant to buy a good camera, and I just kept on putting it off. I probably went and bought a gun or a fishing stuff uh-huh. instead. <laughs> um, but then when I married my wife, she had a nice camera, just just an entry level DSLR. But I just started mm-hmm. messing around with it, and then that's when my passion really took off. So it's basically been in the past six years. I've okay. been married six years now, so it's been in the past six years that I really got into it. And since then, I upgraded the camera four different times. I think. What do you and, shoot with now? Uh, I got a Nikon D810. Okay. Did you have you always shot Nikon or? Yeah, and it's I don't. I mean, Nikon and Canon are both amazing cameras, right. and the only reason I stuck with Nikon because that's what I started with and You're started. Used to it. And, and I started investing in lenses too. too. Oh yeah. So well, that's once, a big one. <laughs> yep. And yeah, un- unfortunately, the glass doesn't transfer from one to the other. Nope. Because I bought a, uh, I bought a, and I still shoot it because I'm not really a photographer, but I do a lot of video, and it worked okay for videography. Is I bought a T3i right when they came out, mm-hmm. and I bought it. One, because I sold a guitar. I'm a recovering musician. And so <laughs> one is because I sold a guitar, and two, my daughter was being more born, and I could sell my wife. I was like, let me buy this and a couple lenses. There you go, the, yeah. The dual battery pack, <laughs> you know, the grip, and, like, you know, some cards. I'm like, I'm going to spend, you know, the $1,200, $1,500. But we're going to get something. We're going to keep it forever. And then I didn't really buy it for hunting. And then I started taking it hunting. That's when we started filming YouTube videos because I was like, oh, my gosh, this thing looks amazing compared to our little, like, you know, DV, $120 DV camera you'd buy at Best Buy. And so that's originally how I got into it, but I never have upgraded up to anything higher. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I've steered clear of the, not steered clear, but I haven't gotten too deep into the photography 
because I've seen a big difference in between like basic lenses, like you know kit lenses yeah. versus what you can upgrade to. Oh yeah, your glasses, everything. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. You go from a hundred fifty dollar lens up to a fifteen hundred dollar lens, mm -hmm. and it's just unbelievable how right. crisp and clear the pictures are. Do you shoot a lot of telephoto stuff, or like? I have a a seventy to two hundred. That's the main lens I use. Um, so it's not crazy zoom, but yeah. it's definitely got some zoom to it. Um, I've been meaning to get a teleconverter for a while to push that up to three hundred or four hundred, but I just never have. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I love it. It's. I, I wish I did more of it, right? Um, but I also like got too many hobbies. Like I love to hunt, I love to fish. Um, right. Like I, I've I've been getting into filming a lot too the last couple of years or so. Right. And like me and my buddy Craig, we always make these fishing videos and stuff, and we'll go out and the fish will start biting like crazy and I'll just like throw the camera away <laughs> to catch fish. And then at the end of the day, it's like, man, why don't we film that? You know, like the bass were hammering a frog the whole time. We could have had great top water shots, but I get too wrapped up and I'm like, I got to catch one. You know? Kevin, Kevin took a buddy of ours, Jamie hunting the other day. They went to a WMA. They called in these three Jakes off of a group and Kevin was, Kevin was like, I just got so caught up, I literally threw the camera down. <laughs> we shot. Because <laughs> the first thing I asked him, I was like, did you get any footage? And he was like, no, man, it was just, <laughs> it was just too quick. I'm like, I understand, because I've had that happen. I've had some deer like, like set up a camera arm, camera on it, mic hooked up, like ready to go. Like, I'm going to get this deer hunt. And then like, you're like, okay, here comes the deer, here comes the deer, and like not taking the time to frame the shot, right? And you're yeah. like, oh, it's all right, I'm just going to shoot him anyway. <laughs> you yeah. draw your bow, and you're like, Dad, it, I didn't get any of that. Oh, yeah. Especially on the cell phone and stuff. So like, I mean, I guess, so you were just basically in the outdoors with the camera, and that's how you got into doing outdoor right. photography. Right, yeah, absolutely. You didn't like say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and actually do outdoor photography. You were already there, just having grown up to, with it to begin with. Yeah, yeah, and I don't, there's not many times where I'll actually say, like, I'm going to go take pictures today. You know, a lot of times I just have the camera in the boat or I'll have it in the deer stand with right. me, you know, and if some deer walk by and I don't want to shoot them, I'll just leave the gun there and pick up the camera and start snapping <laughs> right. pictures of them. That's awesome. Well, I've seen some of your stuff online. It's insane. I went to your website, and and uh, I think right after we started talking on Instagram, I had gone to your website, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I can't. How does he freaking get these stupid shots? Like, <laughs> there's one shot you have on. I was looking through. There's one shot you have of a dude shooting a revolver, and the bullet is in the shot. Yeah. How the, is that just blind luck? Like, you're just like, good. It's, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. We, I took probably a 1,000 pictures that day. Uh -huh. And I literally just, you know, because you can have an out rapid fire. It's six, six frames per second. Right. And you literally just... He, sh he shot off like 15 rounds and I just held them up the whole time. <laughs> and I think out of, like I said, probably close to a thousand pictures, we had three oh, that wow. actually had the, the bullet in the frame and stuff. And yeah, that was an couple. insane shot. I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, it's either got a bit really luck or he took so many pictures that day. It makes me feel a little bit better. Even though the picture looks amazing, the, the, the quality of the picture is better than anything I would take, but it makes me feel a little better that you don't have some kind of like, but I wasn't like, like some like some <laughs> incredible like, shutter trick. Like, I'm going to get this bullet. Like, quick. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> <laughs> like every shot, the bullet is barely in it, perfectly rifling and it's barely blurred. <laughs> well, what, um, I guess another thing you've gotten into that I, I've been following you like you know facebook and instagram stalking you for the last year is kayak fishing like yeah fishing off of a kayak tell me about that because that's gaining a lot of speed right now i'm hearing from a lot of people that are starting to get into that a little bit more it is it's crazy how in the last three years it's blown up and i just kind of fell into it um like i mentioned earlier i had a i was working for a guy business in minnesota and i had the glitter rocket ranger with the 225 in the back and when i moved here uh, we had a condo downtown because that's where my life, wife lived. So, like, okay. there was, I couldn't afford storage. I couldn't, you know, I wasn't going to deal with all that. So, I sold the boat. And the first year I lived down here, I just fished below dams and above dams just from the bank and stuff. Right. And I just, I mean, I caught fish, but I just, I needed to get on the water. Right. Well, things were kind of tight when we moved down here. So, I couldn't afford any kind of boat. So, the only thing I could afford was a kayak. Right. And so, I, I went ahead and bought a kayak. I bought a, a Jackson Big Tuna off of Buddy. And um, I just started loving it and started fishing tournaments. Mm -hmm. And a year and a half later, got sponsored by Jackson. 
Okay. And uh, I just just this past year, I moved up to their national pro staff. So, awesome. um, I'll, I do some traveling and fish tournaments, but I'll travel and work shows, mm-hmm. and I'll fish all the local tournaments. And it's fun. I mean, I I, I eventually have bought, I have a fourteen foot John Bolt in the garage with a twenty five on it that I'll like run the canyon when they're generating, right. and I'll go out to priests and stuff. But I, but I do really enjoy, you know, kayak fishing, and it, and it does have areas or it, it has its place where it actually is better than a boat you know if you right. can get in those tight little areas that maybe logs and stuff you're pulling over that a boat can't get into right um we were down in louisiana fishing redfish and delacro in the marsh and we were in areas that even these flats boats can get into because it was so shallow and muddy right. and the the boats would be out 100 yards from us wishing they could be where we yeah. were and we were just you know catching these huge redfish like yeah. crazy well and there's places on the caney that you just can't i mean if the if water's lower they're not generating. oh yeah you can't Absolutely. get around with anything no. with a motor on it no nope. like the harpeth is a perfect example i don't mm-hmm. know if you fish the harpeth very much but like yep there's some most places on the harpeth you can't get anywhere with a motor yeah i mean the, the harpeth the duck buffalo mm-hmm. piney i mean all, all those example. rivers that they have those super shallow shoals that you're you're going to be dragging and with the kayak, you just jump out and right. it's, it's no problem. And they're all, there's great fish in all of them. And it's, How's it's a lot the, of fun. What's the difference between the, like a fishing kayak and just like a sport kayak? Is it rigged any differently? Or? Yeah, so now they have, especially Jackson has come out with these. Um, they, they've had fishing lines of kayaks for a long time, but they've now lately came, they came out with the Kuza HD a couple of years ago. And okay. then they came out with the Kuda HD last year. And they're, they're like fully rigged. They got gear tracks all over them, rod okay. holders. Um, how does the live, is there a live well in the kayak or how does that work? So, like so the big, the, the big tuna has a center, like it, it's like a center console that pulls out okay. and it actually sits below the water line. And what people have been doing is drilling holes in them. So then the, okay. So then you're actually, as you paddle, it even circulates. Creating. Oh, so it's like self aerating. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, but it, it does slow you down a little bit because of the weight and stuff, right. but, um, but otherwise, you know, people just have stringers and stuff. Right. And, and a lot of it's catch and release, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely awesome. eat my fair share of fish, but for the most time, I'm... Right. What do you catch mostly around here, on the rivers especially? Uh, I fish a lot of trout uh, in the canny. Do you I've, fly very much, or you rod and reel? I've never fly fished. Really? Nope. And um, I have nothing against fly fishing, but I don't think I'll ever do it for the sole fact is I probably would enjoy it, and then it's probably another thousand dollars <laughs> worth of gear that I'll have to buy. And I love conventional fishing yeah. so much that I'm, I'm like, why, why yeah. just, why start something new when I'm I already enjoy what up, I'm doing? I've never <laughs> picked up a fly rod, and that's the reason I'm like, I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Because my wife, like, somebody was asking me the other day. I was somebody on Instagram that sent me a message, and he was like, Hey, man, you need to come duck hunting with us and film it. And I was like, man, if I pick up another kind of hunting, I will be sleeping at your house or in my truck. <laughs> I was like, my wife will kick me out. It's like, I can't pick up another kind. So it's, um, yeah, picking up fly fishing would certainly be, uh, might be the detriment to my marriage and the detriment to my work life as well. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd be showing up late and leaving early. It's already bad enough with turkey and deer as it is. So, mm-hmm. so a lot of, is it a lot of small mouth, a lot of trout? trout? Yeah, and I, I, I fish... I grew up fishing bass a lot, and I, I stopped for quite a while when I started fishing muskie. Then when I got here, I started fishing trout and all that stuff. But then the tournament scene brought me back into gotcha. bass again because that's what all our, all our tournaments are bass. And um, do you fish a team or just by yourself? By myself. Okay. Um, I I enjoy like I, I like I like bass fishing because you got to pattern them and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and it changes throughout the year. Well, I guess any fishing does. Um, but I really like chasing like the hybrid on Priest or the, the stripers in the Cumberland. I mean, it's... What's the biggest hybrid you've got? Uh, I caught a 16-pound hybrid below the dam a couple years ago. Um, and I've caught probably four or five striper over 40 pounds. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, like, in the, either like at the Gallatin steam plant or... How deep of water are you fishing to catch a fish that big? It all depends. I mean, I'll catch them in summer up in cold water creeks in like four feet of water. You know? Really? Yeah. You just about see them. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll fish them at night, but you can okay. you can throw top water at night, and they just blast them out of the water. Wow, four feet of water, a fish mm-hmm. that big. Yeah. That's terrifying to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a dinosaur fish, forty pounds in water that comes to my waist. <laughs> we used to catch huge musky, fifty inch plus in Minnesota. Those things have teeth. <laughs> oh yeah, we would catch them in Minnesota, and in the fall pattern, the lake we fished, they'd move up on the sand flats. Mm-hmm. Well, a swimming beach 
is a sand flat. Yeah. And so we would literally go sometimes like it, it'd be fall. So people really wouldn't be swimming anymore. The water starts cooling down. But we'd be throwing our big baits right outside the swimming buoys and catch these huge muskies. <laughs> and like sometimes there'd be people on like the the diving raft and they'd be like looking at us like, um, can you come take me to shore? Because <laughs> I'm not getting back in the water. I don't want to be out here anymore. <laughs> you just got that fish right there. <laughs> oh my gosh, that thing could eat me if it wanted to. At least my leg. Yeah, that, uh, those things are incredible to me. Especially muskie and anything like that. It's like, it's like giant. I mean, they're like water predators they are that's what they are absolutely it's like people think they're not cute cuddly fish those things are evil i mean it's not as far as like attacking people but like if you if you ever put your hands because we caught we caught one i think it was a muskie and uh it's super small it was like you know maybe 18 inches long it's Mm -hmm. not big at all but i remember pulling that thing out of the water and thinking (laughs) oh my gosh (laughs) like a teeth coming out of its mouth like a freaking crocodile and I'm like, if, and I and I knew how big they got. And I'm like, yeah. if the thing is that small and scares me, like, I have no desire to take to tumble with any of these things. Have you ever gotten popped by one's teeth before? Yeah, I mean, they'll nick you from time to time when just you're trying to take squirming. a hook out or something uh, like that, or you, you try to pick them up and they'll thrash. Um, we just called it musky rash. You know, you just get a big <laughs> slit in your hand. You just throw some uh, throw some electrical tape on it and continue right. fishing. Just keep going. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, what's um. Where's the uh, where's the best place people can find you online as far as like social media and stuff where they can follow your stuff? Probably the best way is uh, on Facebook. I just got my you know my personal account, um, Michael Ernst, and then uh, Bostic Photography. I man, I haven't posted in. Yeah, I know. You gotta get back on that. What's I your know, deal? I know. Even I mean, just repost some old it, stuff. It, I used to love when you posted stuff. All Instagram the time. too. I've really been slack, and I just get so caught up with other stuff. I yeah. mean, I probably got a thousand pictures on the computer that I could just start oh my posting gosh. them. You're killing I just, me here. I need you to put them up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Last Cast Productions is actually the video stuff okay. that me and my buddy Craig started a couple years ago. Do you guys do anything on YouTube? Yeah, we oh. got we got a YouTube channel, okay. Last Cast Productions. We just actually recently did a video that got. It got shared like a hundred some times on awesome. Facebook. Um, it was a video about a buddy of ours who got paralyzed when he was 19 in a car wreck, but okay. he now fishes out of a kayak. So he's oh, wow. paralyzed waist down and fishes in a kayak. So wow. we did we did about a nine minute video covering him and it got a lot of reaction. That's awesome. It's, it's really cool Where's story. the best place to find that? On your YouTube channel? Yeah. You, okay. YouTube, Last Cast Productions. Last Cast Productions. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you sitting down with me. We'll have to get in the woods sometime, around the water yeah, sometime. Yeah, for sure. And go try to, you can show me how to fish. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, anytime. Because like I said, I'm not, that's not my forte. I'm a cat fisherman. Like, that's the joke around, like, my, my wife makes fun of me. Like, I'm a cat fisherman. I throw it in, I wait 30 minutes, and then I pull you it You set the rod in. down. Yeah, I go inside, <laughs> take a beer, I come yeah. back out, and I reel whatever's on it. We, uh, we went jugging the other day at a, at a friend's pond, and then we didn't have any jugs, so we took life jackets and tied fish uh. around. <laughs> yeah, hey, whatever that, works. That's whatever the kind works. Of fishing I do, so. All right, man. Well, thanks again, and uh, we'll do it again sometime. And I appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure.